Hello and welcome to another review for Tech Power Up. Uh, this week I have reviewed Hellsign, which is a game that came out in early access um, just a couple of days ago. This is by a developer called Ballistic Interactive. Um, and for the most part, a lot of the sort of core gameplay uh, is a little bit nailed down, but um, a lot of the game just sort of needs a fair amount of polish and sort of a, a campaign to bring it together. Um, this is probably the most unique mashup of genres I have ever encountered. It's sort of like a, an isometric paranormal activity investigation shooter um, with just sort of an awful lot of different systems uh, all bundled into one game, which don't make it feel too overcrowded, but sort of mesh together in a really, really nice uh, comfortable way. Uh, it has all the trappings required to make a, an authentic paranormal investigative thriller game um, and it shows a ton of promise so far. Um, it doesn't offer a whole lot in terms of an informative tutorial um, but what it's got thus far is just enough to get you started with a little bit of experimentation um, and exploration on the player's part. Um, there's something quite addictive about the general gameplay, uh, searching around a creepy house in the dark, showing me sort of shadows uh, thrown about everywhere with your torch, moving that around, breaching doors with your gun, um, and investigating rune trails with the black light um, while the rest of the house is in complete darkness. Uh, the creeps, the spiders and weird worms and sort of corpse maggots and things are oh, all pretty fast jumpy and skittery to keep you on your toes um, random paranormal activity uh, and it's like absolutely mad audio and visual cues are just enough to make your cheeks clench uh, even if you're only in a scout mission it sort of keeps you on your toes um, and does feel quite sort of not full-blown scary like uh, like soma but but damn near close um, and the depth of possible iterations in the game's monsters leaves you sort of permanently on the edge because you never know what you're going to get uh, the audio is quite simplistic, but um, absolutely perfect for the role required in this game. And the randomly generated houses are similar enough to leave you a little bit paranoid about certain room layouts, uh, particularly a very large dining table that's broken in the floor uh, is something that keeps on getting me. Um, but it is just random enough to keep things interesting each time you go through one of the randomly generated levels. The art style um, is bang on the mark for the, that kind of genre and setting, um, and the lighting work is not too over bearing but it's, it's perfect with the way that the the torch and the general lighting works so the black light uh, there is a small vignette filter on the player camera which is a nice subtle touch as well the game um, is exceedingly deep in terms of character pro progression uh, there's a lot of monster variety uh, the deduction aspect uh, in the cryptonomicon is also really quite interesting it's it's a nice a nice touch on the game a nice way to, to move things forward um, loads of crafting um, and basically everything all the subsystems the game has to offer uh, are all very deep gameplay is quite a simple concept um, but it's really artfully executed uh, and genuinely made me enjoy the grindy aspect of sort of going through houses constantly shooting creeps getting all of your kit out and finding clues and trophies in order to unlock the um, much more entertaining and much more challenging monster hunts in the later game um, it is an early access title however um, which means it does come with a fair amount of issues at the moment the tutorial as i said earlier has been a bit of a falling point for a lot of people commenting on it so far the black light mechanic has been acting a little bit shaky uh, with trails disappearing into walls there have been quite a few updates and bug fixes on that but not all of them have necessarily fixed it permanently loading screens seem weirdly long uh, for this kind of game not sure what that sort of what the deal with that is i'm hoping that will get fixed because i don't know i sort of felt like i could go make a cup of tea on the way for waiting for a house to load um and also there's a bit of sort of stuttering in performance during key events um which in a lot of cases can decide whether you just live or die because um random paranormal ha activity happens and if your game slows down you might literally lose half your health and if you've only got half your health well you're dead uh, so that can get a little bit frustrating, especially as it was played on a mid-range system. And it's not the most sort of graphically complex game in the world either. So it definitely needs a little bit more optimization, but it's early access. So we'll, we'll hope to see that in the future. The UI is fairly terrible. Um, it's very basic at the moment, but it's lacking even basic stuff like double clicking to buy and selling items. Um, the font is all the same just about everywhere. Um, it's very, it very much feels like an open source font that was just the default font in Unity. Uh, and because of that, it's quite difficult to decipher whether something is a button or whether it's just text and highlight. There, there's a lot of weird text in the game which doesn't immediately tell you whether or not you're supposed to click it or not. Um, so that was a little bit of a, a falling point for me. 
the story this far, uh, as well as the general dialogue, just script writing, everything, like writing in general is really crap for this game. Um, I can't really recommend it on that point because it was just terrible. It was like it was written by, I don't know, someone like a teenager. This is the first time he's ever written story and dialogue and they think that this is how people interact with each other, but it's not. Um, it can be mostly ignored until the developer starts putting a proper story campaign through, uh, at which point they really need to either hire someone else or, or go over the script again and say, is this really how people talk? Because it's not, you know, there's there's a lot of fourth wall breaking sort of narrating where they make over 9,000 jokes in brackets during a dialogue branch and it just, it wasn't funny. Um, and it didn't really make any sense where it was either. The difficulty in the early game is is ridiculous. Currently, the difficulty curve starts at the very top of the chart. It's basically the opposite of Kerbal Space Program, um, where it sort of starts off easy for the first 10 minutes and then immediately climbs the cliff. With this game, you start off at the top of the cliff uh, and then you just fall down to the point where the game becomes surprisingly easy, to be fair. Uh, and I think that's going to be something that sort of turns away a lot of new players because A, the tutorial took me half an hour because of bugs, and once you get into the first mission, it is really hard as a new player to get into this game. So the difficulty curve just starts right up there, is impossibly challenging. You can never complete a mission. You always have to have to basically run away from a house before you actually complete any of the objectives. Otherwise, you just will die. Um, and then sort of as you start farming the dollars and start getting all of the signs and selling them and whatnot, then you start making loads and loads of money, particularly if you manage to go on a hunt and capture uh, one of the monsters, then you get an absolute shed load of money. You can basically unlock all of the best guns. And then the game becomes weirdly easy. So it's like a backwards difficulty curve, and that just it blew my mind. I I think that's something they need to tweak, otherwise the game is sort of it's not going to have the legs to carry on. Um, as the game stands, you start at the hardest part and sort of end in a much less hopeless situation. It's still challenging, but you don't improve through your skill getting better. You just improve by having bigger numbers than the enemy, basically. Which I know sounds like a ridiculous observation to make, but if you play the game, you'd probably understand. So overall, for an early access title, it's very good. I seem to have spent quite a long time complaining about a few things here and there, but they are mostly just sort of cosmetic things that just need to be tweaked here and there. And so I think if they fixed a lot of these minor issues like the UI and just fixing the dialogue a little bit, um, maybe tweaking the difficulty curve just a little bit at the start so that people can find their legs and sort of sink their teeth into things. Then I think it has the potential to be a truly awesome and unique title. Um, despite the weird difficulty curve and a lot of bugs and weirdness and all the crazy performance stuff, um, I did find myself getting really addicted to it. It was very much felt like Civilization V where you just keep pressing that enter bar and saying one more turn, one more turn. Uh, and I definitely found myself saying, you know, maybe I'll investigate one more house, get a few more signs and then I'll leave. Um, even after a few attempts where I went through an entire house, got loads of stuff and then got murdered and lost everything. But it still, it still felt like, I guess it felt like it was my fault. And so I didn't feel that the game had cheated me that much. But this early game is definitely hard. And I think it's going to be a speed bump everybody needs to get over before they can access the much sort of uh, the more the more enjoyable aspect of the game, which is definitely there, so it's just it's just a hard shell that you got to crack um, to get to the very better parts of the game. Um, so with a new player experience, if it was adjusted, I think the whole game would pick up as a result. Um, and so overall, I would highly recommend the game. Um, it's getting updates every day. Like I've had a download on Steam every day since it came out of early access. The developer is um, actively um, replying to people on the Steam discussions. Um, so overall, it's shaping up to be a pretty nice title. So don't get too hung up on all of these negative points because it is an early access and the core gameplay and all of the systems and sort of investigating these houses and the horror aspect of it, it is all really very good. Um, it's just a few things that let it down. Um, and many people won't necessarily mind these things. Like, there's tons of people playing the game right now and a lot of them are enjoying it. Yes, there's loads of people on the forum saying, oh, I can't finish the tutorial, uh, which happened to me um, because of some disappearing stuff. But that, that will all get fixed in the future, I hope. Um, by the looks of things, it looks like they're, they're in it for the long run. Um, so yeah, I would highly recommend this title as it stands at the moment. Um, just be patient with it is all I'd have to say. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this review. You can see the link to the full written review and the performance analysis below um, if you're after that kind of stuff. Um, and I'll hopefully see you guys for another review next week.